Hi everyone, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. So I'll be giving you a method to connect any note with each other, irrespective of scale. So that means this could have been major, minor, Dorian, harmonic, Phrygian, or whatever, or it could be a scaleless song. It could just be on the twelve chromatic notes. It could be anything. So. For this lesson, since this can go very, very deep, I'm going to focus just on two notes and maybe three notes. So we'll pick the note C, then we'll pick the note F sharp. So I thought one white note and one black note. And considering that C and F sharp are a tritone with respect to each other, right? I figure that they are the least harmonious with each other, because in the circle of fifths, if you look at it, the farthest distance away. From any note to any note is the diameter of the circle. So you move 180 degrees all the way from C, and you'll arrive at F sharp. So F sharp, because it's farthest away from C in the circle of fifths, it is said to be the most tense, and most people feel that the tritone is rather tense. But we are going to use chords to make this journey or to make a melodic possibility of C and F sharp to actually work well. And it could also be diatonic notes. It could be adjacent notes. It could be C to D. It could be chromatic notes. It could be C to D flat. So if we have some time, we'll try and dive in. But the purpose of the lesson is to just give you the concept and then get you to dive in further. Now we have talked about this concept in great detail on our website as part of our members only courses. The topic is called chord trees. So you'll find that in our theory section. We also cover this. Strategy in our regular semesters at Nathaniel School of Music, where we try to look at harmony from different perspectives, and this perspective is from the point of view of the melody note which you want to harmonize. So we are taking it's it's a top down kind of system where you take the top note. Or the melody note C, and then figure out which chords to go with C. This kind of makes life a bit more cut to the chase kind of a thing. Let's cut to the chase, as they say, wherein you don't have to write down the scale, you don't have to write down the chords of the scale, the inversions. Yes, inversions you need, but at least you don't need the scale. So this might give you. The option that you want for that melody note a lot quicker. Or you might come up with a few options which are very different or very unique compared to mainstream pop and you know commercial music out there. So it could be a way to to compose movie theme like progressions. It could be a way to just be a different composer. Uh, I think bands like the Beatles would have probably thought you use this technique. Definitely bands like Nirvana, all the path breaking bands of you know music history. Bach, of course, would have done this. Beethoven would have has done it in Moonlight Sonata. So Moonlight Sonata is a great example where some you don't even know what the scale is. Yes, it's printed as. Uh, A minor scale, but then it just goes all over the place from there beautifully. And I think a lot of these composers use this concept. And one reason why I like to talk about this method is whenever a person sees the note C, you're tending to think, or most people, at least in my part of the world, tend to think C major, C minor. And now the options would be: Let's color it up. Let's say C major seventh. Let's play C minor seventh. C minor major seventh. See, that is just coloring up the the chord. So you're kind of hiding the fact that it is still a C major chord in in disguise, or still a C minor chord in disguise. What I'm trying to talk about is. What if the chord is still a simple triad, but it's going to be a different triad than what you would normally expect? You'll stare at C, which is your main melody note, and then you ask, "Okay, how do I harmonize it?" Immediately, C something, or if I hit D, it'll be D something. The something would be D minor or D major. So I want to hopefully try to change that perspective. You can still use C major, C minor. That is also going to be part of this so-called chord tree system of mine. But it could be a lot of other options. Come to think of it, so get your keyboards out, get your books out, 
you can consider getting my handwritten notes which are map where i map out all this stuff for you on our patreon page and uh, also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications let's get cracking <clears throat> so i'm going to pick c and the first question i'll ask is which are the major chords that have the melody note or that have the note c in them the answer would be c major obvious namesake major then it would be you ask yourself c would be the one of some chord it would be the five of some chord and it would be the third of some chord and in the case of a major chord it would be the major third of that particular major chord and in the case of a minor chord it would be a minor third because what's the rules and regulations of forming a triad triad is 1 3 5 right so the note c so you're kind of reverse engineering this whole system c would be the root of c major c minor that's pretty easy so you take c c major works c minor works then you take c to be the fifth because a chord note at least for a triad exists at the first degree the third degree and the fifth degree so c would now exist as the fifth degree in the case of what root so you ask yourself which root or which note of music has c as its fifth the answer there would be f correct f g a b flat c in the f scales Uh, c would end up being the fifth also if you look at the circle of fifths your answer is given to you right there if you mug up the circle c g d a e b f sharp d flat a flat e flat b flat f c that way and then c f b flat e flat a flat d flat g flat b e a d g c so you should remember it in both directions that's just mugging it up there's nothing musical there you just a lot of things in music if you want to get results you have to just keep doing it and memorize it it's it's as simple as that you don't have to be very creative about certain things right so if you take c c would be the fifth of f you should know that so then you can form what f major has a perfect fifth on top so f major seems to work f minor also has a perfect fifth on top c seems to be there in both those chords so Uh, so far we have four triads that have c in them c is my target point so you take c c major works c minor works f major works f minor works okay repeat c major c minor f minor f major and they all seem to have the c okay and what about the others these other two ones would be a bit tricky you have the major chord so you ask yourself which major chord has c as its third note that may not be a question you're faced with in a traditional music theory environment but it's an extremely important question when you're composing music so c would be a major third of a flat major so a flat major now that i mentioned it a, a lot of you might be thinking oh yeah come to think of it yes yeah a flat is this yeah but then to remember that for all the 12 roots is going to be the job so that's what i want you to work on so c would be the third of a flat and then uh, a flat major and c would be the minor third of what that's pretty easy you probably all know a minor so in the a minor chord you'll have c as the minor third so now we have a pool or we have a set or we have six branches which are three major chords three minor chords so you have c with c major c with c minor c with f major c with f minor c with a flat major and c with a minor now let me try and pick that other note f sharp which we said is a tritone from c so a rather spicy connection from c to f sharp so you take that f sharp and you go through the same process what's the process namesake major and minor as i call it so f sharp is the root of f sharp major f sharp minor f sharp would be the fifth of circle of fifths or you just know that which note's fifth is f sharp the answer would be b okay so you get your 
B major, you get B minor. Uh, so four chords done. And now you ask yourself, F sharp is the major third of who and the minor third of who? It would be the major third of our friend D major and it would be the minor third of our other friend E flat or D sharp minor. Now here's where it's it gets a bit confusing because if you have remembered D sharp minor as being D sharp, F sharp and A sharp, you might get it. But if you remembered it as E flat minor, it'll be E flat, G flat and B flat. So you might subconsciously not get that you won't get that answer immediately that, oh yeah, F sharp is contained in E flat minor. So you might want to, if it's a sharp note, write the enharmonic equivalent as we say. So write it down as F sharp, also known as G flat. So you can rewrite it or re-spell it, uh, it as per your convenience or whatever you remember it by. So F sharp is uh, there in the F sharp major, in the F sharp minor. F sharp is the perfect fifth of B major, B minor. F sharp is the major third of D major. And F sharp is the minor third of E flat minor. Okay, just to add one, or just to bring one more to the party, let's bring G in and kind of uh, briskly do this. So you take G, again, G would be the, would exist as the root of which two major and minor chords it would be g major g minor right g major g minor then g would be the perfect fifth off c major c minor g would be the major third off e flat major g would be the minor third off which minor e minor so now that we figured this out, we can map these into what I call as chord trees. So a chord tree is nothing but you circling the targeted note, in this case C, F sharp or G, and then drawing these branches into their respective chords. So the way I like to think of it is the chord tree or the note C is the tree and its branches are all those chords and those branches can go more and more they can grow into sub branches and all sorts of other things like a tree does when we start doing you know we've just used major and minor chords what about diminished what about augmented what about major seventh what about suspensions what about minor 6, what about minor major 7, what about the 9s, 11s, 13s. So the tree gets the tree of C, so to speak. That's why I re imagine it as a, a tree because it can grow so big with not just vertically, of course, but also with the branches. And the branches, the way I think about it is those branches are each of the chords. You can start simple and navigate it as you go along. And I like to visualize the, the tree along with a dynamic moving creature like a monkey where uh, you know a monkey will traverse the entire set of uh, branches of a specific tree to eat certain things uh, as effortlessly as it does but then it also has the potential to just jump onto another branch of another tree and just move on in the jungle so to speak so each tree would be a note in music so there'll be 12 trees and then you have to figure out which branch to which branch you want to climb and move and visualize your creation as dynamic as possible so when you're looking at harmony harmony by nature they teach it to us in the books like as though it's a static concept b minor is bdf sharp just go and hit it it should be looked at as a dynamic concept because you're moving music is a motion picture for the years so you need to think of that chord connecting with the next chord so for that you need notes you need chords and you need to visualize something moving which in this context is a, a monkey in a jungle kind of a thing so what we can now do is look at c look at f sharp and look at g we have a host of chords we have 
six that go with C, we have uh, six that go with F sharp and we have six that go with G. Considering that I'm only taking major and minor chords, imagine if we go beyond that. It's going to be a, a serious workout for the brain. So we'll stick with major and minor for this lesson. We'll also link you up with a few of our YouTube lessons from the theory perspective, which cater to some of these concepts in a little bit more advanced way if you want to go forward from here. And like I said, for an absolute beginner, you can always go to our website and check out the members only courses that we have for you, especially in the theory department. So I'm now going to take C and just preview all of the six chords. C, F major, F minor, A flat major, A minor. C. And a good way to practice your chords is to also get more and more confident with the inversion usage. So you could go, you could kind of just keep one shape, C major in root position, look at your book and just try to shift the chords without looking at the keyboard. So C ma I'm doing all the majors first. C major, F major, A flat major, A minor, F minor, C major. You see my hand is literally right there so it could also be a very good inversion workout then i can go to the other position of c which is the root position and go c f a flat a minor f minor and c minor and then i can go into the second inversion of c major g c e and do the same thing c f a flat major a minor f minor c minor so you're planting your hand in that one position and you're not changing so the right hand can just play C while all this is happening can kind of explore notes in the vicinity of C. Maybe let's pick a D just as a passing note. So as a passing note, you're going to use it sparingly. Mm. F major. A flat. A minor. F minor. You could also drop one step down. You could do a, a minor second down or a major second down. So let's see some options. another passing G C major F Passing notes won't sound too dissonant because they are just there here and there. And if you are passing to an interval, which is, let's say, a major seventh, you can always change it to a minor seventh. So if you don't like the sound of B, you can make it B flat. G usually works very well with C since it's a perfect fifth. There are some intervals which are kind of very stable. They work with everything. Okay, so we've looked at C. Then you can look at F sharp and actually go from C to some of the F sharp chords as well like the tree branch concept which i mentioned earlier so if you take c as a for four counts and what chord shall we pick let's pick a flat and then we go to f sharp f sharp uh, now if i stick to a flat strangely enough it works if you make it an a flat dominant or an a flat seven so They work pretty well. But I want to actually change my chord. 
So let's see which one you also like. Quite like that. So that's A flat major. something more traditional like an E flat so if you have na, 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 na. this could also be a pivot to compose a melody just by sticking with C and F sharp as pillars just like a pillar you can move around it you can do anything between the two pillars or in this case as I visualize between the two trees so C with an A flat B major C and I'm kind of connecting C to F sharp with an E flat so if you think about it on its own it's a diminished chord which we very rarely use in music but in this case I think it's if you think about it it's not about the chord it's not about the scale it's the connection from that note to the next note using simple chords which we all know there are 12 major chords and 12 minor chords so you go C A flat mm -hmm. C with A flat and F sharp with the melody note and E flat being the minor chord mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I quite like that so that's A flat mm -hmm. some very different music or it's quite fusion like this started with A flat major what if now you change the entire perspective and say I want to do C major and then do F sharp so I, I can get a progression which is C major and B minor that connect back to C and it doesn't have to be low C to high F sharp it can be F sharp to high C you know so the order or C to low F sharp depending on how you look at it same old same story for the G now like I said you don't have to make your melody just be C F sharp and G based it can be pillars these notes can be pillars and you can move in and around using passing notes which is the concept of melody creation we leave you a playlist in our youtube description on how to create melodies in general a few tips on composing melodies that i have been you know happy to have observed over the years so we leave a playlist on how to just create a melody or improvise a melody using a few simple concepts like 
you know, passing and landing tones in this case, or sometimes even chord tones. So there's a lot more we can go from here. Let uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments as to, you know, if you found the lesson useful and what you're having a problem with. Okay, and pick some other notes as well. You don't have to just stick with C, F sharp and G as we've been doing in this lesson. Try to pick a few more notes, try to observe a few more connections and try to actually make a melody using this. And if ever you want to make this diatonic, in other words, if ever you want to make this work in a major scale, just hand pick or pluck the things that are diatonic so you'll have c major if you want so among this in this ecosystem you can do c major you can't do anything with regards to f sharp because f sharp is out of c major so you're left with c and g as your pillars so you'll have c major uh, for the c note you can do c major a minor and for the G note, you can do G major, E minor, and even C major continues. So if you observe, scales tend to get a bit boring, if you think about it, than not having them. So when you don't have scales, you seem to have a lot more options. You're kind of, yes, you could get lost in the jungle. Because this is a serious, seriously dense jungle of possibilities. But you could... You could find some options and using today's modern recording tools, you can always capture ideas very fast. And if ever you're getting lost, it, it is fun in music to get lost because you have to then, there will be a way to find find yourself back to the home or whatever you consider the tonic. So there is a fun or there is a, there's a lot of interest or a love for being lost, so to speak, right? On that note, we'll conclude the lesson. Hope you have fun practicing all of these things and connecting chords and melody notes together. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. That'll be nice. And hit the bell icon for regular notifications. I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.